In today's video, join me as I'm setting up my weeklies for March using Dutch doors with the intention of saving myself time. Which incidentally was a huge fail and you'll soon see why. Hello to all you lovely and wonderful people. My name is Lynette. Welcome back to all my amazing subscribers and to all of you who are new to my channel, welcome also. Because the month ahead is going to be pretty hectic with moving house, I initially thought I would cut myself some slack and create an image for the whole month's weeklies and then use Dutch doors at the bottom two thirds of the pages for those weeks. So you can see I sketched out a little village scene in the style of the houses I used for my March plan with me, which were inspired by the awesome illustrator Chris Riddell and his series of illustrations titled Unreal Estate, which are these quaint and quirky fantasy houses nestled on top of a rock floating in the sky. Due to the amount of space that I have on the top third of the page, I decided to bring my houses back down to the ground. While still working in the same style so that I'm somewhat in keeping with this month's theme, I decided to create a village scene, which I soon realised ended up being inspired by the town where I live which wasn't a conscious decision and kind of happened organically. When I began sketching my village scene onto the two pages that won't be cut to form the Dutch doors, I started thinking, what if on each page I add a bit of illustration that would add but still blend into the initial scenery? And then I could use a craft knife and cut around the image where there would be sky and would hopefully end up with a really cool layered image, almost like a pop-up book. So completely forgetting the whole time saving thing, I decided to go ahead with making things more complicated and time consuming. I wanted to create a night scene with a big old full moon, which I will position on the left page. So I bear that in mind when adding shading to whatever I'm drawing. So for instance, using the tree that I'm drawing right now as an example. As the light source is coming from the left, the right hand side of the tree will be the darkest. All of my illustrations, I'm keeping black and white. The temptation to get my paintbrush and watercolours out was a real struggle, but seeing as I kept everything monochrome for March's theme so far, I thought adding colour now just wouldn't go with the vibe. So far I've only been using a 01 Unipin fineliner, and despite having other size nibbed pens in front of me, it took me this long to remember that it'd be a lot easier process if I use a thicker pen for doing the darker areas. I was hoping with age would come wisdom, however in my case that doesn't seem to be the way. The first scene that I begin with that I will then build upon. I wanted to create an idyllic rural landscape with rolling hills, a thatched cottage and some mature trees. I thought it'd be fun to add little details like fairy lights hanging from the tree, seeing as I'm going to have a night sky as a backdrop. The style in which I'm drawing is very much like your children's book illustration. I'm not going for anything hyper-realistic. As much as I admire and, you know, kind of slightly green-eyed to anyone who can do that sort of thing, that's just not my style. So I'm using a lot of sketch work and cross hatching that hopefully leads to the quirky and almost fantasy imagery that I wanted to achieve. The first house that I wanted to add to my landscape was a typical thatched cottage. I've always loved thatched cottages since I was a little girl and in an ideal world I'd definitely be living in one. The chances of that happening are very slim to none but until then I guess I'll just have to make do with drawing them. For this cottage I wanted to give it a Tudor wooden frame so that it looked more storybook like. So once I've finished my first cottage, before I move on to the next I decided to add a Victorian style lamppost. Once I'd started drawing it in pen I soon realised that once I start adding the dark sky that it's not going to stand out against the dark night with it being black. So I'm going to add a strip of bushes or like trees behind it so that it doesn't blend in to the night sky. The trickiest thing that I found about doing the extra scenes for my Dutch door layouts is making sure that all the images that I'm creating line up with each other and make sense. So that when I flip the page, the image that I'm then going to create works with the one behind it. My intention is to create a landscape that takes you on a visual journey as you turn the pages. So my first scene that I'm creating is quite a rural one with just a couple of cottages and your village pub. But as I continue to work on the other pages, I will add more buildings and it will start to look like a little village. Once I've added everything that I wanted to to the first scene, I start using a craft knife to very carefully and painstakingly cut round all the outlines of everything that I've drawn. Even in the gaps between the branches and the leaves. So basically anything that should be sky. I'm only doing this to the left hand side of the page. 
I'm not quite sure why I'm working backwards. I'm sure there is some method to my madness, but that's just what happened. But I obviously don't need to um, cut out the sky on the right hand side of the page because I'll be coloring that in. Once I've finished with the craft knife for now, I add the columns for my dailies. I'm working in a B5 dotted notebook. So the spacing might be different for you if you're using a different size journal. As I'm working backwards, the week that I'm working on at the moment is the last week of March, which is only five days, so I'm only adding five columns. For everything to look symmetrical and fit on this page, um, I have done the columns 12 boxes wide, with a space of one box between each column, leaving me plenty of room to add a border along the whole page that I wanted to add and enough room to write for my dailies. Next up, I'm adding some more different style trees and also a fence. Once I've cut all the spaces out between the fence, I think it looked really nice layered on top of the image behind it. And as you can see on the right hand side of the page, I've drawn images over the pages that were cut out and then I've made sure that they fit and work with the scene behind and in front of it. Or at least that's what I'm hoping for. As I explained in the start of this video, part of the inspiration for this Dutch door spread ended up coming from the environment around me. Here on the Isle of Wight where I live, it's often joked that we're about 20 years behind the UK mainland, but I wish we could go further back than that. But I'm very lucky to be living on one of the most beautiful and loved holiday destinations in the UK. Even though we're not short of modern towns, I still feel very fortunate that I'm surrounded every day by beautiful coastlines, vast protected areas of natural beauty, woodlands, farms and the occasional village makes you feel like you've stepped back in time. I love old architecture and the nostalgic and romantic imagery of the English countryside. It makes me think of simpler times and a more sustainable existence that's more harmonious with nature. So needless to say, I will not be adding any modern architecture into my landscape. The church that I've based the one that I'm drawing it now off of is actually an 11th century church that's right outside my door. I thought it would be an interesting addition to the skyline of my little village, but then also gives me the excuse of adding a little bit of spookiness by being able to add a graveyard. If you've been watching the channel for a while, I'm sure you're aware that I love all things spooky. So our little village has a church and a pub, so I thought it needed a shop before I added a couple more cottages and lots more trees. So now the imagery is almost finished with, I add the columns for my dailies. As I'm now drawing out a seven day week, the columns are eight boxes across with a gap of one in between and that way I can fit seven still on a double page spread. Even though my columns are quite narrow, they're still very long, so I've got plenty of room to add anything that I need to. And also I add a border like I did on the other page. However, on this one, I somehow messed it up. There was a brief moment I almost cried because it was like, literally I've gone to all this effort and at the last hurdle I mess it up. However, I ran with it and just made the border thicker. Using a grey brush pen, I'm going to add all the numbers for the days of the week like I have here on that page and then write the day over the top in a black fine liner. With a quick check back to make sure that I've got the dates right. So once I've added all the dates and the days of the month to my weekly spreads. We're gonna have a quick flick through the pages just in case the next bit doesn't turn out how I wanted it to. But at the moment, I'm very chuffed with how everything's looking. But next up is adding the night sky, which I've been eager to do since I drew the first landscape. I colored the sky in with a black brush pen, leaving a circle blank for my moon, which I'm now adding some craters and shadow to. And then with a white Posca paint pen and a white gel pen, I add stars to the sky to finish everything off. I'm really happy with how this turned out. There was one particular tree that's a little bit floppy that could have probably done with having a thicker trunk. So bear that in mind if you do this sort of thing yourself. Luckily the paper in my notebook's pretty thick so I'm hoping that the tree withstands the test of time. I'm really enjoying turning the pages and sort of seeing a different scene develop. I have loved every minute creating this and it's actually inspired me to try my hand at doing a bit of urban sketching. I think it'll be a good opportunity for me to get out the house and appreciate the world around me a little bit more. So if you want to see any videos on that then let me know in the comment section below. Also let me know if you enjoyed what we've done in today's video 
And if you did, then please consider giving it a thumbs up. I know us YouTubers say this sort of thing all the time, but all your engagement and comments and likes really helps. Trying to appease YouTube's algorithm is a massive pain in the bum. Also, if you would like to support this channel and my art, then please consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so I can keep you updated on future videos. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed it and take care.